Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the Subscriber Sunday video where I put up photos at the end of the video from subscribers, things that they're proud of from their yard, flowers, shrubs, uh, things that they've installed or things in their neighborhood or in a park or wherever. So I have those at the end and I have several because I had skipped last week. I think I have maybe five people who had sent in photos. So they're at the end. I've got pictures before that from my nursery, just things that still have flowers on them, uh, things that are just starting to flower now and uh, i wanted to do a real quick walkthrough before i get to the photos the only thing i'm really going to miss about leaving this space where my nursery currently is is i have planted a ton of material here over the last 15 years or so i've been occupying this space and some of these things are now 10 15 feet tall and they were planted to do cuttings i have not maintained them all that well so uh, forgive me for that as you see some weeds and literally trees coming up in some of this stuff uh, over the last year and a half or so. There's been no point, but I planted this stuff to take cuttings on over time. And some of it's just now enormous. Right behind me, right here, this is a, uh, a dwarf cryptomeria, a globosa nana cryptomeria. These can be kept two or three feet tall. It's one of my absolute favorite plants. Here's one that's six by six. Uh, it's just enormous, uh, absolutely beautiful plant here. Behind it, I've got a dwarf osmanthus. Uh, Goshiki Osmanthus up there is probably eight feet tall. Now there's a fig behind here that I shot a couple fig videos on that's, I don't know, 15 feet tall or something. So you can see some of this stuff has just gone absolutely wild. This is great soil here. It's on the edge of a farm and the farm soil has washed it down into this space. Over time, I have all the guy's topsoil. He has all the clay up in that field. So uh, things have just gone absolutely uh, wild in this space. So I was going to walk around and just show you a uh, few things. Holly's going to walk right into my shot as I'm starting this. Right here, these are Nandinas uh, across this area right here, and I have them all the way down this line right here. These were Nandinas that we used for cuttings. It takes a lot of material to propagate Nandina, so I have hundreds of them planted all over the place, and we just basically cut them to the ground to do the cuttings on them. Right here, this is a pink snow camellia, which is now 14 or 15 feet tall it's just coming into flower now in the fall it's just absolutely beautiful but it is loaded loaded with buds all along here i've got different varieties of camellias i've got some crows that are very very loud there's a dwarf azalea here that we use to take cuttings on they don't grow very quickly so i have a big specimen here that we can cut on when we need to this is a uh, apple blossom camellia right here has the pink and white variegation. Really very beautiful. Don't know how well that shows up in this video, but it's just starting to bloom. This is a Rose of Sharon, which was in full bloom a couple months ago here, but you can see how many flowers it had on it. All these seed pods were flowers. And you see they get quite big. There's a Lakothoe here, a weeping coastal Lakothoe. I've got, uh, here's one of these dwarf uh, Osmanthus Goshiki. It's about seven feet tall. It's just absolutely beautiful year round. Here's a slightly different variegation on another one that somebody had given me. I'll probably take this one out. I may cut it down and take this one home because it is a variety that's not sold anywhere else. And it's got a very different variegation on it than the than Goshiki does. Uh, this variety right here of hydrangeas called Bluebird. Here's a Japanese beautyberry. It's very, very large. It's probably five to six feet tall and uh, eight feet wide or so. This is a variegated Eliagnus. Uh, people that live in the south know this plant grows very, very quickly. This variegated variety is uh, quite beautiful, great for screening. Here's an absolutely massive Osmanthus fragrance, and it's just starting to flower now. This entire nursery smells like these Osmanthus right now as they're starting to open up, and the days are still very warm outside. It's quite fragrant, but that is about a 15 foot specimen. Great screening plant, probably in zone eight, nine and 10. I'm in seven, so I've got this thing in a little bit of protection out of the wind. Here is some hydrangea paniculatas, and they're still beautiful even after they've finished flowering. Here's a really nice inkberry holly that I used to take cuttings on for years. Even in the videos, I think I shot for propagation. I've used this plant right here. That's a really nice one. This is shamrock. On the side of this little storage building here is where I have some sky pencil hollies planted. 
that's where we get our cuttings on those. You can see where we just kind of flat top them occasionally. And then these pieces come back up and we take those again and again and again. This is a Ruby Laura Petalum, which is now about 15 feet tall. Uh, this is what happens when you don't prune one. This is actually a variety that can be kept about four feet, but it's crept up about a foot a year as it sat here for the last 15. I hope you can see all these berries up in here. It's a little bit dark. Somebody gave me this holly years ago and uh, I've called it the office holly because it sat next to this little office I built here uh, for the last 15 years. And uh, I actually don't know the variety, but it self pollinates and is absolutely full of berries every single year. I have taken some cuttings on the way out the door on this one. So this is a Poncirus called Flying Dragon. It's a contorted orange. It has these contorted limbs on it right here. And I don't know if you can see the thorns that are on this thing. They are the nastiest thorns <laughs> you'll ever incur. I always tell people when I'm selling them this plant, this is the one you put in, under your daughter's window. This thing is absolutely full of fruit right now. And we take the fruit off of these. They're, I guess they're edible, but it's probably the most bitter thing you'd ever eat in your life. We save these oranges, bust them open. We wash off the seeds and save the seeds until next year. And they germinate pretty readily. Probably about 70% of them end up contorted like this and uh, the rest we just dispose of. Mm -hmm. 